Okay, so now we've added the relevant code that actually creates and opens our browser window using the driver object. We've then got our steps, which are currently output into the console window, which is a simple message. And finally, we've got our afterhook, which actually closes our browser window once all the steps have completed. So now it's time for us to start actually implementing each of our steps. So just to actually simulate the scenario again, we're gonna go on stackoverflow.com. We're gonna log into an existing account. So if you've already got account, you can use your existing account, just replace the credentials that we use in our test scripts, or just create your own Stack Overflow account. Because if you're gonna be doing coding, it's very, very useful website to use. If you've got any questions or issues that you wanna ask, you can just go on Stack Overflow and just basically create a question. And there's actually really good community that people are able to help you and provide you great advice. So we're gonna log into our account by clicking on the login button once we've entered the credentials. And then finally, we're gonna look for the following button because we know if we successfully log into our account, we should then see the actual ask question button. So the first thing that we need to do is obviously we need to uh, access stackoverflow.com. So I'm gonna copy the URL. I'm gonna go back to our actual framework. I'm gonna call the driver object. So the driver, then I'm gonna press dot. It's gonna provide me with a list of actual available methods. So I'm gonna use the get, which uh, takes a string as a parameter. And then I'm just gonna save the actual steps class. I'm gonna execute and compile our feature file again, just to make sure that it's accessing stackoverflow.com. Okay, excellent, so it's access stackoverflow.com and then we've closed the browser window. So now let's walk through adding the relevant code to the actual remaining steps. And if we go back to our feature file, we're basically simulating the following requirements within our actual step file. So the next one uh, actual step is we need to user clicks on the logon button on the home page. So if we go back to Firefox browser, so I'm currently using Firefox browser, we previously added the Firebug add-on to our instance of Firefox. So I'm gonna click on this little bug icon. I'm gonna select this following feature here, and then I'm gonna highlight over the login button. So currently it's given me a direct X path, and as you can see, it's actually highlighted the login button. So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna create a more stronger, more dynamic X path, because let's say for example, they uh, move the position of this particular element. Let's say they change two to three. Our actual locator is not gonna be valid anymore. So if they change the location of the login button in the actual HTML structure, then our actual locator is not gonna work. So basically, the following a dynamic locator works its way from the top of the actual HTML page and works its way down the structure until it reaches the following element. So this is not the best way to actually create locators. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the following and then I'm gonna create a, a dynamic, more stronger locator. So what I'm gonna do is forward slash forward slash, which is a syntax. The following syntax uh, will scan the whole of the actual HTML page. So for example, if I type in div now, it's looking for every div contained within that whole page. And if you look at the matches, there's 14, uh, 1,437 matches. If I re remove one of the forward tags, I get no result. Because what one forward tag means, it basically means work down one level. So let's say for example, we're scanning every div, and if a particular div, once, uh, let's say our, 
one step below a particular div, let's say here, if I put in A, we will still have matches, as you can see. Because what one forward slash does, it says work its way to the one level down. So as you can see here, we've got one div and one level down, we've got an at tag. So back to us creating the actual locator for the login button, I know that this particular actual button here, let me just highlight that again. So go here, go over there. So I know this particular actual button is an at tag. So I'm gonna go forward forward slash at, and then I'm gonna look, I can see that there's login text. So what I'm gonna do is the following, and then close the actual X path. And as you can see, I've got one matching node. You can see it's scanning for every at symbol, at tag within the HTML document. But the difference is, I'm saying to look for uh, an actual at A element, which has the text login. So now what I'm gonna do is copy the following X path. We're gonna go back to our actual page and paste it, or back to our steps class. I'm gonna go driver, dot find element and then I'm going to say by and then dot x path and inside that x path I am going to copy the following inside a string tag and then finally I'm going to say dot click so what we're saying is we're saying to selenium to find an element using an x path locator so we're passing an x path locator which was the one that we've just created that points the login button. We've added that inside the string. So we're using double quotes. And then finally, we say using the click method. So what Selenium has, it has tons of methods, as you can see. It's bundled with uh, full of different methods. So we're using the, the click method. And what we could also do is add a, uh, a slight weight just to make sure that the page is fully loaded and the login button is visible. So we can use thread.sleep and provide a timeout of two seconds. So save the actual steps class. We're gonna right mouse click our feature file. We're gonna go run, run as configurations. And we're gonna run the actual feature file to see whether our code we just implemented works. So the browser window's opened, it's gone to stackoverflow.com. And finally, as you can see there, it clicked on the login button. So if you wanna actually see, uh, check whether what we just executed was successful, what you can do is comment out the following code that closes our browser window. So just comment out the following code. And that's just an easier way for us to validate whether what the code we've just implemented works. So let's just run our code, execute our code again. This time the browser window is not going to close because we've committed out the code. Okay, so excellent. You can see that it's clicked on the login button. And now it's time for us to continue with the remaining steps adding in an email, adding in a password, and then clicking on the login button.